Most people know John Jay's name, but they don't know much else about him. So what should we know about John Jay? He's the first Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. He negotiates what we know as Jay's Treaty, and Jay actually serves as the governor of New York. John Jay grew up in a Church of England family, grew up praying every Sunday morning for the health and well-being of the king. For Jay and other conservatives, it was not easy to declare yourselves rebels against the king. Uh, he always maintained that he joined the revolution in order to protect and preserve traditional British rights. That's a reluctant revolutionary. Jay didn't see the First Continental Congress in the way we see it today as the first step on the inexorable march to the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. He saw it as an effort to get together the folks from the colonies and persuade Britain to change course, as the Stamp Act Congress had persuaded Britain to change course in the middle of the Stamp Act crisis. He didn't go as a revolutionary. He went simply to represent New York and in this, what he hoped would be a, a, a negotiated, peaceful resolution of the difficulties with Britain. And he remained keen to negotiate with Britain up to 1776. The negotiations that ended the Revolutionary War occurred in Paris, and we were represented by the best team of diplomats we've ever had. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and John Jay. And of the three, Jay probably played the largest role. Jay, Franklin, and Adams negotiated for and obtained tremendously broad boundaries for the United States, both on the west and on the north. Seattle might not be part of the United States, but for those boundaries that Jay insisted upon in the British Treaty. Jay has a complicated position on slavery. On the one hand, he's the first president of the New York Manumission Society, and he writes letters and, and talks about um, bringing slavery to an end. On the other hand, John Jay owns slaves himself. Jay's sort of moral stance against slavery helped New York pass in 1799, the law providing for the gradual end of slavery in New York State. John Jay was in Hartford, Connecticut on Supreme Court work when he learned that in a disputed call, he would not be elected governor of New York. And he wrote to his wife saying, a few years more will put us all in the dust and it will then be of more importance to me to have governed myself than to have governed the state. That's not a typical politician's letter. That's a letter of a man more concerned about his place in eternity than his place in contemporary politics. Mm -hmm.